Hey guys, so as most of you will have noticed, there has been a gift given out for 200 gems with a quick notice on the news. We are glad to announce that the servers are now open. Please note there was an internal operations incident where gems were unintentionally gifted to all players. Your gem counts have since been reverted. Please accept the following compensation for your patience and our apologies for the inconvenience you have experienced. So, compensation, 200 gems, a rare unit summon ticket. However, People are not happy about this, and that is because the internal operations error that Gumi is mentioning here is everyone last night was gifted 5,000 gems. Now, the 5,000 gems appeared in the gift box with a little notice saying test, and there was no news from Gumi, nothing explaining this gems, it was just in your gift box, and you had 5,000 gems. So if you accepted those gems, uh, Gumi did a maintenance, and anyone that accepted the gems had 5,000 gems removed. If you spent the gems, then you had 5,000 gems removed anyways. However, if you had below 5,000 gems, Gumi did not send people into the negatives, as has been done in other games such as Fire Emblem Heroes. Instead, they only reverted you to zero. So if you had 500 gems, you got the 5,000, and you did a, three, a full three summon, three step summon, you spent 4,500 gems, which would have left you with 1,000 gems, and Gumi only takes 1,000 away. Instead of rolling back the servers, however, they have let everyone that got the gems to keep them. And people are not happy about this. However, I'm not going to simply focus on this as the reason, and I'm going to give a big background as to why people are so annoyed about this, and why this is really the tipping point for people in regards to Gumi Global's handling of the game. So SmoothJK did a quick video on this, which really sums up exactly why Gumi's compensation is so bad. But in order to fully understand the situation, you have to go back. So this game, The Alchemist Code, released globally uh, earlier in 2017. I want to say it was in October. Might have been September, and it was a soft launch. It was not on the App Store. You had to go and find the APK, and then you could play the game. So this is not really a huge problem. It's annoying for people that really uh, did not get to play during the soft launch, as the soft launch had a number of advantages that allowed players that played during the soft launch to really benefit more so than other players that joined later. And while this sounds kind of stupid, oh, of course they got to benefit. They were playing the game. Uh, it's more than that. Stuff such as the Zenny Summon. So I'm sure everyone is familiar by now with the two free Zenny Summons. You have the free one, which also costs 10,000. And you get to summon it five times for free every day. And then there's the 10 times summon. And this only costs 9,000 Zenny. So if you remove this last zero here, that's how much this costs during the uh, basically the soft launch. And this allowed people to get lots of Sacred Lion Blades, lots of one star and two star unit shards, such as Rin here. Um, and it really was a pretty big advantage, as well as the fact that the smaller summoning pool meant that with the guaranteed 10% summon rate, as we're kind of wondering if this summon rate for rare uh, 5 stars is still at 10%, we believe it's still around 9 ish 10%, but we're trying to collect data for that. Uh, it meant that you were pretty much guaranteed to summon decent units such as Yomi, Vettel, or other okay 5 stars, as well as a few bad ones such as Elizabeth, Chloe, and Zahar. But the small 5-star summon pool meant that even if they weren't on banner, as long as you summoned one, uh, you were able to max limit break, or at least limit break these 5-stars much better than people that came later and are summoning on banners with stuff like Flamel and Shenmei, as they have these new 5-stars as well as all the older 5-stars. So the soft launch, it's not a big deal. They did have to play to do it. Um, it was a very fairly minor thing. But that li And after that, Gumi handled the game fairly well for quite a while, actually. Uh, all of... November was fairly good. I can't remember any major incidents. We got the Retzius event, there was the Mian event, the Retzius event, and for the most part those were fa handled fairly well. The Retzius did have the fairly annoying super evasion meme, but it wasn't impossible to beat. You just had to find some high level mercenaries or get to level 60 yourself and try it out. However, December is really when Gumi started to, to put it bluntly, fuck up. So the first problem was the Babel event, holiday time in Babel. 
So they did some one thing really well, which was the present event, where you had your main protagonist characters run around the stage collecting treasure chests while Michael killed off uh, a number of enemies. And this was great. This was, it gave free stuff to everyone, super spirit of Christmas and all that. It was great. The problem was the Holiday EX event. And I know people now say that, oh, it wasn't too hard, it was beatable. Uh, but that's because the entire community had to come together, and over the course of the entire event, we found, I want to say, three working strategies. You had the initial strategy, which was a bunch of Magnus J2s. You would lure all the enemies into a big group and then blow them all up. Then we had the Shayna strategy, which had a bunch of Shaynas running different points of the map. Use sharpening focus and one-shot stuff. And that's really just the Holy Brawler strategy, but it's called the Shayna strategy because most people had a Shayna with Holy Brawler. Most people did not have a Lucian or a Yomi with Holy Brawler. And then finally, uh, one really clever individual discovered the Beast Tamer strategy. Initially with Vetsius, but other Beast Tamers worked as well. And that was just, you would have a Beast Tamer hide on one part of the map until everything went berserk, get the rats to surround you, and one, not one shot, but slowly kill everything over the rats as the rats deal one damage each. Um, and those were the three ways we managed to deal with the event. But it was definitely too hard, even though they did nerf it before giving it to us, it was still way too hard for where Global was at. And the other problem was, it was a limited time Christmas event. If this had been something like the Sabretti event, that level of difficulty could have been tolerated, just because, yes, it was beatable if you finally figured it out and you had the correct units. But it was a Christmas event. It was supposed to be, you know, all in the spirit of the holidays. It was supposed to be fun and encouraging people to play, not having people farm stage four, stage three, and stage five for as many wreaths as they could get so they could buy the few decent items in the shop or the snowman hat. So really that was the first big problem. And then Gumi kind of compounded that a week later with the Sabaretta EX event. So the Sabaretta EX event was problematic because, quite frankly, it was way too hard. I believe pretty much everyone agrees that Sabaretta EX event was way too hard. The strategies, I believe, were you have a bunch of Chronomancers enhance a Dragon Cavalier, usually a Zangetsu because he has huge damage, and try to beat it that way. Or you could use a Sage to slowly beat the map. But honestly, it was... I, I didn't even bother with it. It was so annoying to have to try that event. Like, I tried it once or twice with Sage, but when you mess up once and your run's over, unless you want to use gems, it's just not worth it, especially with how long it took and the amount of runs they wanted people to use to do it. Because it wasn't like they wanted you to beat it five times. That would have been tolerable. They wanted you to beat it like a hundred times for a fairly bad armor for Zahar and Sabaretta. Sabaretta himself is not a very good unit, and Zahar is a good unit, but he's not so amazing that you absolutely need to farm, kill yourself farming this terrible armor. So, right after the holiday event, we had that. Then, uh, after that, Gumi started to redeem themselves. Everyone was pretty happy because at the same time, they also re released the uh, wind, the elemental stages where you could farm a few soul shards, as well as the super experience event, which was great. The super experience event let people catch up in levels, it let players that had farmed up their account level but didn't have enough summons to farm up their unit levels uh, really start to catch up in levels. And it also let, uh, it was just a really easy map that allowed Global to start to catch up in terms of progression. And the shards thing was a step in the right direction, but honestly I feel they should have given way more shards for it. They should have let us farm it, and every five times we did it solo, they should have given us another milestone for five shards, which would have meant that if you farmed it 50 times, it was a pain in the ass to farm, but it wasn't anywhere near as bad as Sabaretta, you would have gotten 25 shards of each element, which lets you job to uh, any unit of your choice. And that would have been acceptable. Six shards is... Ugh. I mean, they gave it to us, I guess. <laughs> Thanks. But really, it was kind of annoying to farm, and it just wasn't really good compensation. And good compensation is really a problem that has been kind of consistent throughout the game. Gumi ha seems to have a problem with giving out good compensation. Um, the only real time I can think of that I felt really nicely rewarded wasn't even compensation, it was when we had the Brave Frontier crossover, the four-star potential ticket was upgraded, not potential, the four-star unit summon ticket was upgraded to a five-star unit summon ticket. And personally, I believe it should have been a faster unit summon ticket from the start, but at least it was a nice thing to do to upgrade it. 
uh, and it definitely scored points in a lot of people's books. But apart from that, I can't think of any good compensations Gumi's offered, and that is really the problem with today. So we've had Gumi's slowly starting to redeem themselves from the Babel event and the Sabaretti X event, which both kind of left a pretty sour taste in people's mouths. And they had a few decent things going on. We had the Phantom of the Kill event coming up soon, a bunch of banners, even if the banners weren't that good. And then they pull this. So let's start explaining why this is such a problem. So first we have, uh, obviously, the fact that people benefited from it, right? The 5,000 gems, if you didn't have any gems to start with, and you spent the gems, you are now probably about three summons up, or at the, at the very minimum you are two summons up, because 5,000 gems is two full nine-step summons, not the full nine-step, two summons on a nine-step banner or two full 10 summon rares, 10 rare summons. Um, and that's 20 units that you now have that someone else does not. And if they'd rolled it back, no one would really be that salty. It'd been 200 gems and a rare summon ticket for the servers being down and a slight rollback, which would be annoying, but acceptable. And here's their notice outside of the game on Facebook. Dear Alchemist, we are glad to announce servers are now open. Please be informed. It's the exact same thing as in the client. So I'll just close that. Here is the 5,000 gems gone mega thread, where you can really, uh, you really, really just see the community is not happy with Gumi, and Gumi really needs to kind of step up their game, because <laughs> people they had two problematic events in a row, so we'll just uh, go over here. Yes, my name is Morgan. So they had two problematic events in a row, and we're kind of hoping the Phantom the Kill event was going to get everyone back in Gumi's good graces. Uh, personally, I've already stopped spending on the game. Uh, I've let my Alchemist Pact run out. I'm still logging in for dailies and everything, but really, Gumi needs to do something drastic to get the player, their player base, to really have the player base gain confidence in them. Because this is just... It's not cool. It, this is They released this after the fact. This is after the news. Uh, they've seen all the stuff going on on Facebook. Dear Alchemists, firstly, we deeply apologize to all our players for the unintentional gems gifting incident and emergency maintenance that happened earlier today. It was a genuine operational mistake on our part, and we have taken steps to prevent future incidents. So the key phrase here is operational mistake. This was not a bunch of hackers hacking the game and messing stuff up for Gumi. This was them accidentally sending everyone 5,000 gems. And I'll come back to that later. And we have taken steps to prevent future incidents. We are aware that the community has various concerns with our decision to remove the unintended gifted gems and respective compensation. Upon evaluating the incident, a minute number of users received the gems, and an even smaller number of users used them. Therefore, we believe that the best resolution for all players is to remove the unintended gems from the affected users. With this letter, we sincerely apologize to everyone for the inconvenience and unrest this issue has caused. We are striving to improve from here to bring you the best gaming experience possible. We greatly appreciate your continued support of the Alchemist Code. San San on behalf of the Alchemist Code team. So, there's a number of problems with this letter. First off is it was their their mistake, right? It was not, as I said, a bunch of hackers. It was not uh, people injecting gems into the game uh, unintentionally. It was them making a mistake. Uh, they are aware, you know, they, they're clearly aware the community has various concerns with both the fact that they removed the gems and the compensation they gave us. And really, I mean, <laughs> this kind of reeks of the same problematic uh, letter they sent during the Babel event. If I can remember correctly, the Babel event, they sent it a letter after players had expressed their concerns over how freaking difficult the EX event was, saying that they understand that the event is hard and they will take all our feedback and concerns into consideration for future events and hope that we can learn, use this as a learning opportunity to learn about the uh, mechanics and skills of Alchemist Code. So really, that was just such a patronizing way to say, no, fuck you, we are, uh, we're not going to make it easier, this is how the event's going to be, and uh, you guys need to learn, and basically, get good was the, the summary of that letter. And with this letter... It's them saying, yeah, we see that, you know, you guys don't believe uh, we're compensating you correctly, but we believe we are, and uh, we'll, you know, take this into account going forward. And 
so I'll, I'll just sum up before I tr kind of conclude this video. So Gumi releases the game. It's a soft launch. People don't know about it. People that got to play uh, had some major advantages in the form of events being open, in the form of a 9,000 summon Zenigacha, and in the form of a lower summon pool, meaning they could summon more of the really good 4 five, and 5 stars, as well as the good 3 stars, such as Amira. Now that one's not too big a problem because people that played to get that advantage played to get that advantage. Yes, they played and had a number of advantages of people that started playing later, but it's not a huge deal. Then Gumi does fairly well, releases a bunch of good new banners. Uh, Shayna banner was pretty nice, even if it had a bunch of bad units on it. And uh, people kind of go, okay, it's a good game. It's really unique compared to other gachas. They've got a bunch of cool stuff. It's tactical. Uh, it's a great game. They've got a monthly pack. Sweet. However, uh, after that, Gumi does the... We've got we have a bunch of good events in a row. And then we have the problematic event, which is the Holiday Time in Babel. It, the EX event is too hard, but Gumi basically tells us to get good and learn the mechanics of the game so we can beat it. And the community comes together, and we barely manage to get good and learn the mechanics of the game to cheese out a bunch of wins. So that, that all happens, and after that happens, we get to... Right after that happens, in fact, uh, before Gumi can even really kind of let the player base simmer down from how patronizing the letter was and how annoying having to do farm this EX event is, they release the Sabaret EX event, which is, to date, the hardest event that has ever been released in Global, and probably should not have been released for uh, several months until players have, you know, full teams of 70, 75 plus units, instead of, you know, having to use Logi, Retzius, and other free units because we haven't pulled enough to have 3 stars above like level 72. So I've been playing since the actual launch, and my highest 3 stars like Venekis, who's 72 or something like that. And uh, that's because I buy her soul shards in the, so in the shop. So yeah, uh, so the Sabarati X event happened. And then Gumi, they slowly start to get back in our good books. And then they do this. And this is a problem because not only is Gumi kind of doubling down on their own error, they're doubling down on their own error. They are letting people that manage to take advantage of this, they're letting the select few that took advantage of this keep everything they got. Uh, and of course, Gumi would have a problem if they took it away. But if they took it away and just everyone kept their starting gems, like they said right here, a minute number of users received the gems and an even smaller number of users used them. They would have a problem, but it would not be a problem that affected the majority of the player base. And the problem would basically be, oh, we messed up, you didn't get a bunch of free stuff, here's some free stuff to compensate. That is how the compensation should have worked. Instead, it's, you, we messed up, a bunch of people got some free stuff, here is 200 gems and a 3-star unit summon ticket to compensate. And really, 200 gems? What am I going to do with that? Buy 25 5-star uh, shards? Oh, sorry, decimal error. Two and a half five 5-star summon shards from the shop? Seriously, like, <laughs> this is practically predatory here. I go to freaking Louise's shop and uh, just open it up over here. Three bolt shards. That, hey, 40 gems, for, for an extra 40 gems, I could get three bolt shards with that compensation from earlier. whoa -ee. And then the three-star summon ticket. I mean, here, I've actually been saving mine. Let's see what I get. This is going to backfire on me so hard if I pull a Suzuka or something, but I mean, <laughs> then I pulled a Suzuka, so uh, yay. But no, it's probably going to be, I'm predicting Anros. I don't, uh, I don't know what's actually going to be. Hey guys, this is my first, uh, my first summon on the channel. Woohoo! All right, let's see what it is. Come on, red. Are you red? No, you're blue. Are you red? No, you're blue. Will it be Anros? Let's find out. Dun dun dun! Stayed blue. Oh, it's Elaine. <laughs> Better than Anros, but not by much. Hey, look, I can get her to sixty-nine. That would be. Two-thirds of the way to the Sabarati X event required level. So, yeah, Gumi, they messed up, and they really need to get back in people's good books. That is kind of the theme of this video. Gumi has been messing up for pretty much a month straight at this point, and people are not happy. Uh, personally, I've 
I'm still playing uh, Alchemist Code, but I've moved over to King's Raid as my main gacha after hearing about how generous they were with the New Year event. And really, Vespa's been impressing me, but not the point of this video. Um, they really need to do something big to get back in people's good books. Like, if I just open that up and go back to Reddit for a second. So here it is, Alchemist Code. You can see that, like, all the top stuff on the subreddit, the subreddit's actually not too, super active. We've got 4,000 alchemists, but not too many people actually post stuff. As you can see, if you just scroll down, we've got stuff from over a day old. Most of the top threads right now are all because of this test gift, emergency maintenance, and the talk about compensation. And if we didn't have a mega thread about this, I fully predict we would have a bunch more threads. And this would probably be the most active this subreddit has been for several weeks. Sorry, a few hiccups there. But really, Gumi has got to do something big, and they've got to do something drastic. The Alchemist Code news channel that they released recently, uh, I want to say it was two days ago, is a, start, a step in the right direction, but they didn't really answer any big questions, they didn't really give us any solid numbers. They told us the next, the upcoming collaboration started with an F, and it's a Phantom of the Kill, which starts with a PH. So I mean, I guess a bit of a language barrier too as well, which is kind of a problem for the global audience. And honestly, I, I don't expect them to really cover this too much. If they cover this event, this small event here, um, in their next episode, I, I fully predict it, they would just say something along the company line of, oh, we've compensated the users, and yeah, that's it. So, like, Gumi really needs to do something big to get people back and playing the game. Like, I haven't quit, but I'm only logging in for dailies now so I can keep my daily gems so I can do the polls every week. Uh, my fiance is doing the exact same thing. She's uh, pretty pissed off at the game as well. And a lot of people that I've talked to on the Discord and Reddit are really annoyed with how Gumi is handling this game. Like, is it that difficult to be generous? If 5,000 gems, it's a lot of money in terms of gems. If I go over here and I open up the gem purchase thing, uh, in Canadian, 5,000 gems, I want to say the first time bonus gems is actually done. Uh, so I want to say it's only 2,500 gems, actually. I believe that's a bug. Which means if I want 5,000 gems, I had to have to spend $80 Canadian. Um, even with the 1,900 bonus gems, seeing as I only get that once, I would still have to spend that much money. Uh, well, a bit less than that. I would have to spend that, plus that, plus two of those. Which is 14, plus three plus 40, which is still like 50 bucks, like seriously, like 50 bucks is kind of extortionist for the amount of gems you're getting, but 5,000 gems, right? Like sure, Gumi can say, oh, we are, we don't want to give out 50 bucks for free to everyone, but you know who is probably the most pissed off at this? It's the whales, because whales, the reason you whale in a game like this is because you want all these cool units, you want the waifus, and you want to be better than the other players. You whale so you can win in the arena or get your waifu and make her awesome and when you spend the money you are spending the expectation that you are going to be one of these elite few in the game you are going to be better than the other players and you are going to get all the waifus and when gumi lets people have 5,000 gems for free um, and then keep them and they don't give it to everyone the only select few get it the whales are the one most affected because that devalues the gems they've already purchased. Like for me, if I got 5,000 gems for free, sweet, 5,000 free gems. That's more than an alchemist pact uh, for the entire month. But it's only going to get me an extra two summons for a whale. And I didn't spend any money on that, right? At most, I've used an alchemist pact. I've saved for a month and a half of the alchemist pact to get it. But for a whale, that's 50 bucks of their money that's just been devalued by Gumi being given it to everyone, but not necessarily them, because they didn't get to get it as well, because they were not one of the minute few that was online at the time. So, really, in summary, Gumi messed up. They they messed up and gave it 5,000 gems, and then they did an emergency maintenance, and they messed up again by not rolling it back and just giving everyone a small compensation for it, and they messed up again with how patronizingly small the compensation is. This compensation is a slap in the face. It's not a compensation. It's pretty much an insult. 
Like, <laughs> seriously. I'd practically be happier if I didn't have the 200 gems and I could just be salty on the forums instead of being having to go like, I mean, yeah, they technically gave us 200 gems and uh, for me and Elaine, I'm sure some people get lucky with that, but for the vast majority, the 90% or more, depending on what the summer rates are, we don't know, um, <laughs> you're getting a three star, or maybe at best a four star. So yeah, Gumi, you messed up. You really need to do something big to get people to want to keep playing this game because you are mismanaging this game and as fun as this game is, there are plenty of other gotchas out there that are also fairly fun and <laughs> compensate the users properly when they mess up. Hell, Brave Exvius. This this is another Gumi game. The same thing happened. It wasn't even your fault. It was hackers. Like, Gumi did not accidentally send out a test 5,000 gems. Hackers did. And then Gumi let everyone keep it and gave them extra uh, lapis, which is the currency there, as well as, I believe, a five-star summon. Like, you couldn't do that for Alchemist Code? Really? I don't know. It just feels like Alchemist Code is Gumi's red-headed stepchild that they've released on Global as a quick money grab and will probably shut down in a few months if they keep doing it like they're doing. Anyways, guys, um, I'm salty, but that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, have a good one.